to the video I'm, I'm posting. I made a 15 by 30 inch piece and put it on Facebook last night. And it looks really cool. It's kind of like, a, it looks like a swipe. It looks like a bloom. It looks like a pearl pour. Pearl pour. And I put them all in one um, piece and I really like the results. But I realized in the video, I didn't tell you what I used and that doesn't help you. So I wanted to do a quick video to tell you the products I used so you can replicate this at home if you would like. I'm going to get you down off of my face because this is the fourth time I filmed this. And apparently I can't get this high enough for you to actually see what I'm doing. And so it's always out of frame. <laughs> That's ah. So let me get you down on the um, table so you can see what I'm doing. So. Sorry, it's a little jumpy for a moment. All right, Ooh, too low. So I'm just gonna speak without you guys seeing me. So I'm gonna start with my base coat. It was the Payne's Gray, if you're all crooked. Um, my, it was Payne's Gray by Golden, but um, to it, because I wanted to see what would happen if I made this kind of a cloud pour too, uh, I used the Satin Enamel in dark denim. So I made of 20 ounces or so. So I made, I put a Payne's Gray in there and I'm not gonna tell you, I don't wanna say how much Payne's Gray I used simply because it was golden. If you use another brand Payne's Gray, you may have to use less. I put in it, put enough Payne's Gray in there to get the color I wanted. Um, and it takes less of golden because it's so thick and it's so heavily pigmented. But I did add to that volume, two teaspoons of the satin enamel. Now the pouring mediums I used in here are also a little bit different and they were very pur purposeful. I obviously wanted lacing and that's what I got. So I used the Australian Fotrol, but I didn't want to use that much because that stuff is liquid gold and I wasn't going to pour 20 ounces of that at all. But to the volume here for 20 ounces of base coat, I used about five ounces of the Australian Fotrol which is still a lot, but it doesn't kill that whole gallon that I have, or liter, four liters that I have. Um, so I used the Australian Floetrol, and then I used about uh, 15, uh, sorry, not 15, but 13 or 12 or 13 ounces of the American Floetrol. Now, I used the Australian Floetrol because it, uses, it creates lacing, like a bloom. I use the American Floetrol because it's very good at selling. Um, and then to it, I added a little bit of GAC 800 because it's very good at preventing cracking. So chemistry is very important. It's very important to know what your products will do for your paintings. So I had the um, globular cells that you get from the satin enamel. I have the lacing that you get from the Australian Floetrol and I get more cell support from the um, American Floetrol. Now, I also wanted my cells to hold shape really well and I found, and I don't know if it's true or not, but it works for me. To all my products, I use this acrylic binder. It's kind of like glue, um, but I don't know what it is, but it helps bind the pigments, but I feel like it has kind of a glue consistent, or glue characteristic too, where it holds your, your cells together. So this is the Amsterdam acrylic binder that I buy on Amazon. So that's my base coat. For all my colors, Oh, and you can see the consistency of my base coat. It's not um, very, very runny, but it's all, certainly not thick. It leaves trace there for a second, maybe, before it starts to sink again. To my colors, I use my house paint blooming bloom pouring medium, and that is the bare interior exterior high gloss enamel. The uh, product number is 8300 with the Minwax Polycrylic Gloss Varnish. Now, um, that will give me a very thick, thick product, but also I added the binder to, that, uh, to these colors too, the acrylic binder too, but I didn't want it to be so thick. So for both of them, I didn't want to add water to any of the, these products, so I thinned them out with more of the gloss varnish by uh, Minwax. So you saw the consistency of my base. This is the consistency of my colors. So quite a bit thicker, but still runny because that's how you get a pearl pearl. You have, a, have colors under a thinner base and you slide them over very quickly. 
and you get pearls. So <laughs> I used every, every reaction method that I can think of in acrylic art on one piece and it was pretty darn successful. So now you guys fast forward if you'd like, see what this video, what I actually did to get those cells. Um, and thanks for visiting and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Arissa and this is Arissa Ru Art. Happy Saturday night. I am doing a pour for you. Now, this looks like a weird configuration. You may wonder what kind of pour I'm doing. Well, I'm doing something new. I don't know if I've seen exactly this. So we'll see. Maybe I have, maybe I've not, but we're gonna find out. And I'm just gonna show you what I'm going to do. Um, well, I won't, I'll just tell you. It's like a pearl pour, but it's on a massive scale. It's with cell activators and it makes really, really cool lacing and I'm super excited about it. So um, I'm gonna lay down my colors and as I lay them down, I'll tell you what they are. So this, well, I'll tell you basically what they are because this is a pink that is made up with so many different pinks. I don't know what it is. It's Pearl Pinks by Arteza as well as the Pebeo Studio Acrylics Iridescent Red or Blue, Red Blue, I believe. And so it's a bunch of different colors. So I'm just gonna lay this one down first, I think. And I'm just gonna lay it kind of everywhere. It'll involve a lot of different color, or a lot of color, volume wise. And then I have the a mixture of, ugh, this is like Windsor and Newton bright green with a bright green by Amsterdam. I don't know. That's why it's hard for me because I've mixed so many different colors. It's hard for me to always tell what they are. Um, but I hope everybody's having a good Saturday night, if that makes you feel better. I don't know, it probably doesn't. Then I have the Pearl by Decorate Americana Metallics. And to that, I know I've added the um, Interference Violet by Golden. So I'm just gonna fill in my gaps here. And next I'm gonna put the Iridescent uh, uh, precious gold, iridescent precious gold by Pebeo Studio Acrylic. And I'm going to go up a little bit into this here with that. And then finally, I have my turquoise deep by Liquitex because it's just so gorgeous. Everybody should use tur tur turquoise deep. It's just a beautiful color. And then I'm going to continue to layer some more colors. There's a lot of color in this, a lot of it. Kind of go up here, uh, a little bit more of the green up here too. Why not throw them all in there? And it doesn't matter what the composition is doing right now. You will see what I'm gonna do with this. Ooh, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to drip it there. So I'm gonna try to take some of that out and replace it. Okay, so I'm gonna torch. Get rid of all the bubbles because I just mixed these paints. I'm gonna mix, torch it quickly because this is house paint and you can't, you don't wanna burn it. So now it's time to get very messy. The last thing, oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to put some white cell activator throughout. So I'm gonna do that too. All right, so sleeves up. It's about to get fast, it's about to get messy and it's about to waste a lot of paint but in the end it'll be beautiful so I'm gonna pour a ton of paint right here all the way side to side and then this is like a pearl pour by when I say that I mean because with a pearl pour you tip you um, tilt very quickly so I'm gonna go very vertical with this which is why I left this dry because it'll slow this paint movement down because I really want this Paint's gray, I didn't tell the background color. The paint's gray to have a chance to come over these paints. So here we go. All the way over, just tilt it all the way around. And you want your paints to stretch. So you don't wanna put on too much. You don't wanna put on too little. 
because you want it to reach, but you do want your pants to stretch. And you don't want to stop once you start um, tilting. Just tilt and tilt and tilt. Oh, get off. I want all that off so it looks like I'm stretching too much, but I'm not. This is exactly what I want it to do. There we go. Center it up a bit. And there we go. So now is the, the waiting point. Let me clean my hands off because over time, the pearls will develop here. As you see, they are. I'm gonna put where my thumb was. I'm gonna clean this up right here. And so you can torch to help in, uh, encourage to, um, cells to develop. But otherwise, we're just gonna sit here and I'm gonna let this film and come back in a half an hour and show you what I've got. Look how pretty those cells are. Oh my gosh, you guys. Uh, watch, you're gonna get to my favorite part. Look at the cluster here. That is gorgeous. That is so amazing in person and it's translating somewhat through this phone, but you, you know it never looks exactly the same. I am in love with doing this this way. I am definitely going to do some more. Oh my gosh. Look at them and look the sides. They're so trippy. I painted the sides so they have good coverage and it looks just like melting cells on the sides. I love them. I'm sorry, I'm super loud because I'm super excited. But look at that from this direction. Wow, guys, oh my gosh, this is so much fun. I love it so much. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. <laughs> this is Arissa, super excited on a Saturday night. I'll see you guys next, next time. Bye.